Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is December 18th, 2020, seven days to go before Christmas. It's a week from today, of course. And uh, here we are. We'll be doing the video probably next Thursday, next week's video. We'll do it the day before Christmas. And uh, I hope all of you got your shopping done. Those of you that uh, uh, are, are Christmas observers and uh, everything's arrived. I'm still waiting for packages. I've got packages all over the country that haven't gotten here yet. Uh, yesterday was kind of exciting around here. We had our first big snowstorm of the year. Uh, I stayed home for the day. We were out, out on the point, and uh, we had about uh, a foot of snow and uh, heavy winds off the ocean, 40, 50 miles an hour for most of the night and day, and it cleared up, uh, stopped snowing late afternoon, and uh, the kids, all the kids in our neighborhood are out sledding on the hill, sledding in our backyard on our hill, running around, around the kids from around the neighborhood. It was a ball, and uh, all the parents out there, of course, trying to shovel out their cars and uh, saying hello after the storm. Uh, we had huge waves off the ocean yesterday coming out of the northeast. Um, we face, our house faces northeast, so we had, you know, 10, 15, 20-foot waves crashing into the rocks down the street here. So anyway, but we're here. It's fine. We're all dug out. And uh, last week on here, on the last week, there's been a lot going on over on the Bitamount site. Uh, we added a bunch of things this week, and I'm going to go over them quickly in case you missed them or, or you're looking for something to do this weekend. Um, over on the reference pages in the magic black box on the home page uh, under catalogs and books, We've added a whole bunch of catalogs this week that we'd had put aside. We noticed this week that Gallery Zach had added a nice auction. They got a three-day sale coming up in January. And it reminded me that we have a whole bunch of Gallery Zach PDFs that we've been sort of picking away at. And we wanted to get them up onto the site the way we do the Christie's and Bonham uh, stuff because the Zach has some nice auctions. They, they handle some really, really great auctions. And, and they're heavy in the Japanese area. Lots of nice Netskis, lots of good Inro, Okimono, as well as some good Chinese things. And uh, it prompted us to, uh, to, 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 get, to, get, to get on that and get those uh, squared away so they could be turned into catalogs. And they're all over here now on the site, as well as a number of catalogs from Lamperts, another, another very good auction house over in Europe. And uh, their catalogs are now on here. So the, basically the first three rows in the reference uh, section, the research section, are, are all brand new from this, this week. All right, just uh, the, all of these. So if you want something to peruse over the weekend, they're all there, especially if you're a Japanese buyer. And that makes it 629 catalogs on there so far. Wow. <clears throat> the other thing we did uh, that we, we, we wanted to get to was that we've been waiting for the British Museum to sort of get uh, squared away uh, with their online uh, uh, stuff. Uh, they're, they're, they, they had a bunch of stuff. Uh, as you know, we have the uh, auction... I mean, the uh, museum lists here right below the auction houses on the home page, so you can open the drop-down menus to look at things. And we didn't have the British Museum on there for a while because their site was a, just a total mess. I, during the last eight months, I think they've had some time, and they've, they've managed to go in, and they've cleaned up their, uh, their archives, done a bunch of new photographs, and they've updated their site, and it's all here. So we've added the British Museum collection to the list of our, uh, links to museums so we have the you know all the Qing ceramics, Dao Quan, and all that. And if you click it open, you get uh, let's see here, there you get this. This is the this is one of the pages that you'll come to. If you click one of the preset links that we've done, you get uh, this, and it pulls up everything from by specific period, uh, like these. And then of course you can you can blow them up and look at them. Uh, the images enlarge beautifully. They've done a really good job with this at the British Museum. Really, really great job. Young Chen period bowl here right now in blue and white. Beautiful example, so on. And the other thing that's nice is that once you land on the page, you can clear the search if you want to do your own searches as well. But we've, we've, we, we created about, I don't know, probably 20 or 30 searches preset for you so you can get to items quickly. The other thing we did also we added was people always ask about, you know, the ends, beginning and ends of certain dynasties. And you go to look on Google for them, it's sort of a pain in the neck. So Chinese rulers by period list. This is a pretty long list. It covers all of the Chinese rulers um, uh, uh, going back to Neolithic times. You know, Shang Dynasty, Western Zhao, Eastern Zhao, Warring States, Spring and Autumn period, all that. With all the little in-between emperors and rulers throughout the uh, different periods, as you can see, some of them weren't there for very long, just a few years. 
right down to the uh, Ming and uh, then, of course, the Qing Dynasty, Lao, all the different Sung rulers, all the different Yan rulers. And what's nice is that, is that we were able to get them together with like uh, the, the Ming Dynasty. Before they became emperor, they were known as Taizu, this emperor. He became Hongwu, of course. And then you have uh, Dai Zhang became Jing Tai, uh, which was an emperor that you hardly ever see anything from, but at uh, any rate. And, he, and then all the Qing emperors, right down to Puyi. All right, so you can now get that with their dates quickly. If you're doing an eBay listing, you might find it a handy place to go to quickly grab uh, the dates of certain leaders and emperors for your listings. Or if you're selling things or doing an appraisal or something, keep it handy. Keep it handy. It's a good, useful list to have. All right, the other thing I wanted to mention was there was a lot going on on the uh, global member pages this week. There were a lot of things that uh, came and a lot of things that went. Gallery Zach uh, uh, has a, a three-day sale, a very nice-looking three-day sale coming up in uh, January, around the 20, 21st, 22nd, I believe. <clears throat> Great Netskis. Uh, uh, they have uh, two, two, two days of the sale, almost completely uh, uh, heavily focused on Japanese, but they also have some good Chinese things in their sale. And um, this is just some of the Gallery Zach material. This is over on the Live Auctioneers uh, page on the on the uh, global member pages. Uh, there's a, they've added a lot of stuff. They have some good bronzes and so forth. A lot of good Japanese Amari, some very nice Chinese ceramics, as you can see, uh, some early um, uh, uh, later Ming export pieces and so forth. It's a, it's a good series of auctions. You want to check it out. All right, if you're if you're if you're looking into uh, buying some things over in the EU. One of the things I wanted to mention was this is coming up. This is Hannum's over in uh, London, in Selborne, rather, in the U.K. has this coming up. It's, it, the sale is in 16 days. If you're a China trade buyer, you want to check this out. This is one of those big, they call them wedding baskets. Uh, I saw my first wedding basket like this when I was a kid at the PBD Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts here, which has a very big Chinese export collection, maybe the biggest in the world. And uh, this, this, this kind of basket was in their collection early on. This is an, an auction that Hannums is having. If you live in the UK, you you might, and you're an export buyer, this is something worth chasing because these do not turn up often in good shape. It has a couple of small breaks in the back on one side that I noticed, but that was it. Often, you, when you do see these, they're just a wreck. They're absolute wrecks, and you sort of have to do a museum stabilizing thing just so you can even look at them. This one looks to be 99% complete and in good shape. Uh, if you're an ivory buyer and you live in the UK or you don't have export problems, uh, you want to chase this because the estimate in the reserve seems awfully low. 800 pound um, uh, to 1200 pound estimate, which I think is a bargain. Heck of a nice thing. They also have a vase from the same period. The other thing they have is this perfectly nice little uh, 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 late Ming, early Qing dynasty incense burner. Good patina on it. Lots of uh, legitimate looking wear. Two to 300 pound estimate. And uh, then this is Karana. No, this is Zach has this. I wanted to share this. I love this little plate. I'm not going to buy it. So if you want it, go ahead and buy it. But a beautifully done little Arita dish with a tiger on it. And I love the tiger. The tiger is almost done the way they, they did uh, uh, tigers in Korea. Sort of that big, swollen, hunched up back. They did them in Japanese as well. I have a charger at home with one of these tigers on it. But I just love this. Nice example, 18th to 19th century, but really well done. Very artistic, very charming plate. This is the kind of thing that is in the sale. Modest estimate, 100 to 200 euros. That's a great little piece of art for that. It measures about uh, uh, about seven or eight inches, seven inches or so in diameter, eight inches in diameter. So it's not tiny. It looks tiny in the picture. It's not as small as it looks. And then on to this, this is something else. They have a big, large Amari uh, porcelain dish, 18th century, uh, beautifully done. 36 centimeters in diameter, about 14 inches. Again, two to 400 pound uh, a euro estimate, very reasonable. And this sale is on January 23rd. This is Zach's. All right. And uh, I want to make sure we get them all right. This is also on Gallery Zach. As I said, they have a lot of good Japanese things. Is this beautiful pair of Meiji period uh, mixed metal plates uh, with reticulated uh, cavettos. Uh, two to 400 uh, euros, perfectly reasonable and so on. So check that out. We're going to update the, the global member pages probably tomorrow. I'm leaving some of the stuff up because uh, so, a lot of people are following things on there. And if they want to see what they sold for, if you have things on there, you want to go back quickly and check them, we're going to update the page tomorrow. So uh, come back late tomorrow and it will all be updated. But between now and then, you can go check prices realized because uh, they, they had some very interesting results. 
All right. This was one of the things that was on there. This was uh, the uh, Codner down, down in Florida had this. It was a very, very nice 18th century ch uh, China trade pistol handle, uh, side handle uh, chocolate pot. Beautifully done. Lots of gilding. And it had a very low estimate, a couple of hundred dollar estimate. What was the estimate? Two to three hundred dollar estimate. I talked about this a couple of times. This is a rare type of teapot, and it looked to be in very good condition. And apparently the bidders agreed as well because it ended up selling for thirty-two hundred dollars. It didn't really sell for ten. That, you, that estimate was artificially low. If I were estimating this for an auction, I would have estimated it very comfortably. You know, at uh, twelve to eighteen hundred dollars, something like that. Uh, figuring it would probably go over it, but. At any rate, it still it still did a very good price, uh, brought a very good price because it's a rare type and looked like it was in very nice condition. That was sold a week ago, and then they also had this. It's really nice. This is also this is Coronari had this over in Belgium. <clears throat> Their sale finished this week. If you if you were watching it, you can go over and check and see how they did. It was this really nice leaching, maybe early Republic period watercolor of these very stylized Chinese ladies surrounded by uh, artworks and scholars' objects and so forth on these uh, recessed end tables and so forth, and another one holding a lantern and uh, somebody bringing food out and everything, these beautiful, beautiful peonies coming out of a big vase. Just a lovely scene. And I went reasonably, 650 euros. This is a good-sized picture. It was, uh, uh, fr it was apparently framed at 53 by 51 centimeters, so it was, it was pr pr pretty good size, 20, 28, 29 inches by 29 inches roughly. Uh, Nice-looking thing, good item. And then over at uh, Coronari, they had things like this. They had some very good blue and white, as they always tend to. Uh, this nice pair of uh, Kangxi period vases or jars with their original covers. Some fritting, as always, with Kangxi pieces like this. But attractive, nice-looking pair of jars. And they were a decent size. They were about 9 or 10 inches tall, and they sold for 1,200 euros, which isn't bad. And then they had this. This was absolutely wonderful. 37-centimeter charger, or sort of a big basin. Uh, Yong Chen to Chin Lung period, very, very beautifully done. I love the Cavetto with these uh, very nice cartouches with precious objects, uh, Buddhist precious objects wrapped in ribbons, and then this uh, romance of the Western chamber scene in the center in this nice-looking flattened outer rim, framing it all like a round picture frame. Just absolutely wonderful. Sold for 2,400 euros, which was very well-deserved. This was a nice piece. And as I said, it was 37 centimeters, so it was pretty good size, almost 15 or so inches in diameter. Nice big piece, and it was a bowl, not a plate, which does make a difference. And other things coming up are, are things like this. This is uh, who's this? This is Eddie's down in New York. All of these are, are already on the global member pages. Uh, here's a sale coming up in a couple of weeks on the fifth on January third. Some nice looking Chinese porcelain this time around, and some other things. So uh, if you use the uh, uh, global member pages, check that out. And then now let's take a look and see what happened over on. Uh, oh, this is the Bid Square page. Uh, there's a big sale coming up on here. I think this is uh, this Alex Cooper. Let's take a check a check here. Yeah, Alex Cooper sale. If you've been watching, it starts tomorrow. The Alex Cooper sale. It's been on here for a few weeks, so I'm assuming everybody's looked at it just, just as a reminder. The sale is on the uh, 19th, and uh, there's this very nice export gouache on paper that's in here. Very, if you like Chinese export watercolors, this is a great little painting. Uh, four to five hundred dollar estimate, and no bid so far, starting at two hundred bucks. So you want to check check out that sale. He gets good things. Okay, now on to the uh, eBay uh, newsletter page and the Catawiki page. Uh, this was uh, last week was uh, the three hundred and fifty third of these that we've done. Over, it doesn't seem possible. I, couldn't, I, I just noticed that this morning. It caught my eye. We just we update it regularly. We don't think about how many of these things we've done, but it's 353. And uh, the stuff on here did about what, what we were sort of anticipating. Some things did very well. As I said, things get a little bit quiet between now and the first of the year. You'll see a lot of stuff coming onto the market after January 1st. Uh, though we do have, um, uh, on this week's newsletter page, um, uh, one of the eBay sellers who often does fixed price only sales, welcome all friends, they have an auction uh, coming up. Um, they have a bunch of auction items up right now, about 60 or 70 auction items, and we're going to have them in the newsletter page this week. They sell good things. Um, I'm going to check that out. But last week's uh, our results were pretty good across the board. Uh, were a few good buys as always. Uh, as I always say, leave a bid. You know, you never know what you might catch. 
All right, so we're going to go through some of the prices realized. One of the things that sold last week, and I just like these because it happened to be a pair. These are a, 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 not a very well-known type of Kang Shi mug, but not, not one you, a lot of you have never seen before with these uh, turned upper sections on them. They turn up in Europe most of the time, northern Europe. They, they, they t seem to turn up fairly with some frequency throughout the year. They're beautifully done in Chinese Amari, uh, Kang Shi period, and a pair, which is kind of nice. And uh, the pair of them sold for 510 euros, which I think was reasonable. That's 250, 60 bucks a piece plus shipping, and you're getting two of them. And um, here's a picture of the bottoms with the uh, la fungus on there and all that. And these are nice looking. So there you go, 510 euros for two of them. And then on to this. I think these were relative bargains of the week. This is a pair of ivory, uh, 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 sh either shakers or brush pots. I'm not sure what they were. These were often brush pots. <clears throat> the bottoms have been knocked out of them for some reason, uh, which often happens with ivory because they, they shrink and contract. If they've, if they've inserted bottoms, they fall out. And um, at any rate, these were very nice, nicely carved, uh, good-looking bits of ivory, okay? And uh, they sold reasonably. $69. And it may be because people are afraid to ship them. I don't know. Uh, but these are nice. They were 19th century. The carving was good. The cartouches were nicely done. So if you lived in the e if you live in Great Britain and you bought these, you got a heck of a good buy on your hands. 69 bucks, and uh, they were how tall? Five, 8.5 centimeters tall. So about four inches tall. Very interesting little things. Very nicely carved. And then over to this nice piece of silver. It's an absolutely beautiful piece of silver. By I want to get, get this is by uh, we have several pieces of silver. This is by Luan Ho. And uh, he, he's uh, listed in the, in the Chinese silver book over on the site. Beautiful example. He was known for doing these uh, chrysanthemums like this. Nice stipple ground. Signed on the bottom. Okay. There it is. Beautiful work. Absolutely beautiful work. He was probably made about 1900. Um, and and uh, he was a Shanghai worker. All right. And if you come over to, uh, over to the uh, reference section that we, you know, we keep all the catalogs and books. You can come over, um, um, let me see here, uh, da, 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 da. this is, uh, hold on, we've got a couple of pieces of silver we're going to show you. When you see silver over on, on, on eBay and you want to know more about the silversmith, remember we have um, that wonderful uh, catalog on here for Chinese silver in the reference section, you can go and look it up. And this is uh, the, that particular seller, he is uh, that particular silversmith, he is listed in here. Uh, shows the samples of his work and so forth. He was a well-known silversmith. He was pretty prolific, but he was also known for doing top quality work. And uh, the pattern on this uh, piece that just sold is very similar to the, the, the pieces that are on here, this 1895 three-piece tea set. Uh, heavily done in repoussé, beautifully done chrysanthemum motifs, and then a hammered ground, just like on the piece that sold. And I think the price on it was pretty reasonable. I don't think... Uh, there it is. I don't think uh, $262 was bad for that at all. This was Philip Carroll Com. Um, it's not a seller I'm not that I'm that familiar with. Over in the UK, very nice, very nice powder dispenser. And the other thing, piece of silver that went up was this. And this is by Cheng Wu, uh, a beautiful example and uh, an absolutely interest, a very interesting story about uh, about uh, about this silversmith, um, Cheng Wu was a silversmith who was tied in. Um, we're going to get over here and do this because this is, this is sort of an interesting thing about early trade out of China uh, to do with the silversmiths and so forth. And I hope we can get this all. Uh, hold on. There we go. Let's see here. There are Changwu, also known as uh, Changwu, and then Changwu. And uh, he was a silversmith uh, that sold things through this very interesting trading company that was founded by this man, um, uh, 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 Chu, Chu Yutin. He lived to be 95 years old. He lived to be very, very old. He was born in the 1840s, um, and he ran this trading company out of Hong Kong, and they exported luxury goods to the United States. His receipts have been found in San Francisco and old, uh, and old stores and companies, Gumps and that kind of thing. And they exported all kinds of stuff, and they, they worked sort of as a cooperative. 
and they had uh, silversmiths that supplied them with things. They also traded in opium, silk, other luxury goods, anything that was worth money, basically. And then they sort of shared in all the revenue. And there's a, a, a sort of a good story in here about how, how this company was set up. And they were he was known for doing these very elaborate chain woven, sort of almost like chain mail silver women's purses uh, in the early 19th century. Uh, early 20th century, rather. These are absolutely lovely, like Victorian handbags and so forth. And uh, there's quite a bit of his material in here, and you can come and look it up. All right, so if you're interested in Chinese silver, use this book. This is over on the um, on the page. This is uh, uh, Adrian von First's book. He is arguably the most knowledgeable person in the world today on Chinese silver. Um, and that includes silver that was made for the domestic market and also silver that was primarily exported. He's researched all of the marks. It's an unbelievably handy book to have. This is the, the fourth edition was printed in 2015. It is on the reference section over uh, at Bitamount, so you can look things up if you want to. All right. I highly recommend it because the, 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 the silver industry, silver trade, the, the history of silversmiths in China is a very interesting category. And it's worth knowing about. And Chinese silver is still, I think, radically undervalued. All right. Now, over back over to what happened over on uh, eBay and what the auctions were. Was this this nice Nonya Straits cricket box? Uh, it's a nice uh, classical shape that you see, but done in the, in the Straits uh, color palette, and it sold for four hundred and eighty nine dollars. And this is the piece had a repa replaced lid or repaired lid, original lid, but it had been broken into four pieces and been mended, and it still brought $489. It gives you some idea uh, how strong this uh, the, 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 the Straits community material is in this market. Really something. But handsome looking thing, handsome little box. I like that. I like little boxes like that. They're nice to have. And then on to this, that big uh, ch late uh, Qing Chinese silk with the pine tree and uh, the birds and so forth. Beautifully done, absolutely elegant with a mother of pearl frame. You can get sort of forget that the, the frame itself is quite spectacular. Beautifully done mother of pearl inlay work into, into a rosewood frame. And then this very, very finely needleworked uh, example. Always, when you look at Chinese silk needleworks, always magnify the picture as much as you can. This seller provided outstanding pictures so you can really see it. And you get down into these areas over in here and you just see how fine this work was on this. This was a superbly a uh, 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 worked piece of silk, absolutely superb. Beautifully done, the trees, everything, every little detail, the wisteria hanging off of the pine tree, just great. And uh, it went for $1,525, which I think is absolutely reasonable. This was a beautiful piece of uh, late Qing silk, absolutely great. And then over here to this, uh, the Dragon Festival dish. I hope some of you noticed this. This is an interesting, interesting uh, uh, plate with the, with, the, with the scene of the Dragon Festival on it. You know, the, what is it, the fifth, fifth day of the fifth month um, in the Dragon Festival. And there's a lot of superstition and lure around it. And you do find it illustrated with the dragon boats in uh, Chinese art, Chinese porcelain. Uh, there they all are. Um, from the you know 17th 18th century, going way back right through the right through the Republic period, it's a it's a it's a very big traditional Chinese holiday, and here's a scene of it. So uh, if you have a friend who's Chinese and you want to get him something interesting for for uh, a gift in, in, in some year, especially if he's born in uh, the month of uh, May, uh, get him a dragon boat dish. At any rate, this went reasonably 165 dollars for an interesting plate made probably around 1870 or so. Nice looking thing. And then over here uh, to uh, uh, Katawiki, there was this nice-looking Wanli dish that went for 300 euros. Nicely done, good deep cobalt colors, uh, a, a very, very attractive plate. And uh, like I said, 301 euros, not bad at all. And then over here to this, this was that album of uh, eight uh, uh, 18th century paintings that I mentioned last week I thought was so nice. It was up to just a few hundred bucks, I think $400 last week. It ended up doing quite well in the end, but this was a nice set. And uh, whenever you see a set like this, always think of framing them as a group and make a wall out of them, make a room out of them. And th these were nicely done, very, very um, uh, atmospheric. You could do some work on the uh, on the artist. There were a lot of people that drew like this, but this kind of work, I just, I just love this, with this giant craggy sort of uh, impressionist scholar's rock coming out with rows and rows of script. So you have the painting, you have the seal art, you've got the script art. 
all of it in one package. And somebody bought all of them for oh, roughly $200 a piece. Eight albums, $1,663 for the lot. $1,663 sounds like maybe a lot of money, but then again, when you break it down, $200 a picture. Not bad. Get them all framed and hang them. Wouldn't they look great on a wall together in a room with a nice light over them? All right, now, coming up, a few things that are ending this week. Uh, this ends on Sunday. Is this really nice uh, Chinese export uh, 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 teapot with the cranes on it? I just love this. This is sort of an unusual pattern. Those of you who buy teapots will think, I haven't seen that run very often. This pattern has been around before, but not, it's not a common one. And sometimes it's other, other animals other than, than red-headed cranes. But uh, this time it's red-headed cranes. It closes Sunday. It's up to $156. And uh, if you can get it for uh, under $400, you got a heck of a buy because it's a good-looking teapot, and it's probably Kung Shi period. So a uh, nice-looking thing. And then uh, this is uh, ceramics and collectibles, the Shangri-La guys. They have a whole bunch of stuff uh, being auctioned this week. Eight days to go. So we'll have, we'll have all of their stuff on the newsletter page this week. Uh, when we update it, it's all lined up and ready to go. This is something that caught my eye, though, that they have. I love this little dish. Uh, it's one with uh, recumbent water buffaloes running around the outside of it and one in the center sort of in a recumbent position. It's very, very interesting. Usually these bowls with animals going around the rims are, are most often horses. Um, um, and this time around, they put water buffalo in, and I love this. This is a late Ming uh, Kosomatsuki bowl. It was made for the Japanese market. It's got eight days to go. It's up to $31, so you want to check that out. And uh, this is another piece they have up here, Kangxi period or transitional or somewhere in there. One of those quickly drawn, that pencil sketching blue and white wear. And, uh, and then over to this, big piece of silver. Um, this is Super Shrink, I believe, has this, isn't it? Yeah, Super Shrink. Uh, really nice by Wing Chun. Famous Chinese silversmith uh, on this bamboo sh bamboo brace uh, stand under it with the burner and so forth. I don't think this was done in 1870. I think this was probably done a bit later, probably 1890s or so, around the turn of the century. But what a handsome piece. And I love the bamboo handle up here on top, all in silver. Absolutely great. And, uh, and then this closes later on today. It'll be on the newsletter page. If you get to it early, you'll see this. This nice-looking um, uh, late Ming bowl. It's only up to 140 bucks. If you can grab it for under 250, you got to buy. And then this, the uh, uh, this this nice piece of uh, uh, Qing Dynasty uh, Jun type Guangdong ware. Uh, it's up to 300 dollars. I mentioned it last week just because I thought it was really nice. It was only up. I think it was up to two dollars at the time. But I just love these. I love the the feeling they have, and I love the glaze on this. And I like the. Uh, the, the, the exposed redware bottom and how the glaze is sort of running down. It just has a great feel to it. Just a great feel. And I guess a number of people like it also. It's got a couple days to do. It's up at the $300, and I suspect it'll probably go up a good bit more by the time it's over just because it's charming. And some people are going to think it's Sung. It's not a Sung Dynasty piece, but some people will think that and believe it, and that may push the price ir uh, sort of into an irresponsible level. But that's the way it goes. All right. Anyway, it's a nice thing. Buy it as a 19th, 19th century Jun glaze type of Guangdong wear, and you're fine. Very attractive. You know, for, for another, you know, 450, 500 bucks or something. It's a good piece. All right. And that's about it for the week. As I said, we'll get next week's newsletter out uh, a little bit uh, uh, early because of the, of the Christmas holiday. And um, if you haven't subscribed to us yet here on YouTube, please do join us. Uh, we do these videos every week. And uh, we're working on some ideas for some new videos. And we're going to, um, uh, we're right now, we're within uh, a few weeks of launching the Bitamount Live site. I know I've talked about it a bit, but we had some real issues we had to figure out about making sure everybody could use the site easily with multi language settings. All the multi language stuff seems to be squared away. They're stress testing the site again to make sure all the bugs are worked out so nobody has a problem. And uh, we will be releasing a couple of videos on it um, as it as it gets completed, um, and we're gonna we're gonna put it up and explain um, how we'd like to see it proceed. And uh, you know we want you to treat it like your website. There's a modest fee on there if you sell something. There's no fee for listing, and uh, so far it's looking very very good. And um, we'll have a lot more on that in the very near future. I, it's, it took it's taken an extra month and a half just because there were a few things that I wanted to put on there that sort of threw monkey wedges into everything, sorry. Uh, like being able to, you know, have it in different languages. And uh, a few other features I wanted to make sure were on there. And uh, they were able to do it with some, some uh, um, uh, hard work 
and uh, I'm, I'm sorry about the delay. It was because of me. I caused it to be tied up, but at any rate. Uh, I'll take the hit. I'll take the hit. All right. Have a great weekend. Get your Christmas shopping done. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to us uh, here yet, please do. Come over to Bid Amount, sign up for the newsletter. And if you haven't joined the uh, Global Members pages yet, give it to yourself for Christmas. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. See you all next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.